Hey, so welcome to today's video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ruben Naidu. I help individuals suffering from anxiety attacks, in particular social situations. So they're speaking in front of people, their mind's going blank, their voice is shaking, their heart rate's going through the roof, they feel like they can't breathe, they're feeling depersonalized in groups, they're on the outside peering in and they can't be present in their heads, or they feel like they're gonna have a panic attack in a conversation, they keep thinking of what to say next. These are the types of individuals I help, and this is what my channel is dedicated to. Now, the reason I wanted to do a reaction video to Eckhart Tolle, which is gonna be the video for today that I'm gonna react and kinda analyze and help you understand. The reason I wanted to do this is because a lot of the people that reach out to me, they're suffering from this anxiety, and they try to get onto the spiritual stuff and they try to get in onto the spiritual literature, these spiritual mentors, but they can't make it work. Okay. So I want to do this video to really help you understand what he's trying to say, give you some real concrete examples so you can really internalize it and make sense of it along your journey to being anxiety free. Now on, on some level to be anxiety free, you have to raise your level of consciousness. And, and just think of that, it's just a fancy word for your awareness or your like your current worldview. How you view the world, how you view people, how you view yourself is not the same that it was five years ago. So think about it that way. It's different, it's evolved. You've raised your consciousness. And that's essentially what, what that means. But you can also, you can, that five year transformation that you went through, is you can accelerate it. You could ramp it right up and get that same amount of growth in a few months. You know, if, if you, if you ta try to tackle your anxiety head on, you get the proper mentors, you get the proper help, you can raise that, that consciousness or your, the way you see the world in a short amount of time. Who's the absolute expert? Who's an absolute expert at raising your consciousness? Eckhart Tolle. So he's clearly figured some things out. He's the go-to guy. So let's not waste any time and let's dive right in, okay? So let's take a look at this right now. The feeling, first of all, needs to be acknowledged and accepted. He's so calm. Uh, you can't start with letting go, so you have to start with acknowledging it and accepting that it's there because it's part of what is the isness of the present moment mm -hmm. whether it's the, an external thing or an inner thing it it is what is uh, and to deny or to argue with what is creates suffering so you acknowledge you accept that it's there then so I, I just want to stop it right there and just uh, just jump in here. So um, this this guy's amazing. I'm a huge fan of this guy. Uh, haven't really gotten into his books yet, but I'm going to dive deep into his books um, once I find the time to. So let's see. Now, he he's essentially saying that when a feeling comes up, and essentially when, when you're getting anxiety or getting this anxiety attack, the, the rush is basically just a cocktail, if you will, of feelings, just painful feelings that are just rushing up to the surface. And that's what you experience as anxiety. Now, one of the things that I, I often see is, is people who I work with is they don't acknowledge, they don't want to acknowledge the feelings. They want to, they want to chase goals and they want to get on to moving forward with their life. But they don't want to deal with the actual trigger that happens, the feelings that come up. So it's like they want to pursue their goals in their careers and, and crush it in life, but they have unresolved trauma, unresolved emotional pain. So I, I totally get what he's saying. You have to accept the feelings. You can't just letting go is denial. And denial is one of the biggest problems I see with when it comes to resolving anxiety. Denial is just... De, I, the, a friend of mine told me it, it stands for doesn't even know I am lying. It's so powerful. It's so thick that people don't want to acknowledge that there's unresolved issues inside. If you're getting triggered, there is uh, something to take a look at. So I totally get what he's saying here. 
how much time you need to be with it depends, varies from person to person and what, what kind of a feeling it is and so on. And then the question arises, what is the link between that feeling and your thought processes? The person needs to find out whether the thought processes keep that feeling alive continuously, whether they renew by playing out, for example, a past scenario in their minds, by r reviving memories from the past, by dwelling on certain narratives that are painful, repeating them in their minds, that gives renewed energy to the feeling. Mm -hmm. So the first, the most important thing is to beware of both levels. What's the level of my thinking? How does that contribute to the perpetuation of what I feel? So I'm going to stop it right there. Okay. So essentially what Eckhart's saying is when, when you get triggered, right? When you get triggered, there's essentially a story that goes over top. So let's say you you know you're going to get an anxiety attack. And so a common common thing that people do is they start avoiding situations, start avoiding the things they want to do. Avoidance, right? So what's what's the story? The story running in the mind would be people are mean. People are going to judge you. You're going to be humiliated. That's the overlying story. But the emotional, the pain that he's talking about is that actually happened in the past and it's unresolved and that pain is still within you. The story keeps the pain down. The story dictates your avoidance behavior because if you have that programming running, you're just going to avoid things. If you're going to avoid things, the pain stays down. It doesn't get resolved. It doesn't come up and get processed out. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's dive right in here and see what else he's got to say. And so you also then acknowledge that oh, this, these are the habitual thought patterns that go through my mind in relation to the feelings. And then the, you would begin to realize that the letting go, the most important step in letting go of feelings is to cut the link between your thinking and what you're feeling. How do you do that? You do it by by being aware of your thinking and realizing that that thinking is pain. It feeds the old feeling and the narrative, whatever it is, is a painful narrative and you realize that you've been keeping it alive for some years and you, when you, there's some, enough awareness, you realize that it has no purpose except to make you unhappy and to perpetuate that feeling. However, it has, you need, and this, this is how you can help or, the, or any counselor or therapist or spiritual teacher can help the other person by observing the feeling and seeing how the mind, the mental narrative, has so both the mental narrative and the feeling have a, seem to have a life of their own. And if they have been in, in there for a long, long time, they don't want to go. Right, and so essentially to just kind of recap what he said is, that old narrative, maybe it makes you avoid situations. That old narrative, it's causing further suffering. Why is it causing further suffering? Because the pain's still intact. And he's also saying that the there's there's a link essentially between the two. And I call these two different languages. I, I call them the language of the, the mind, the language of the heart, and the language of the mind. The language of the heart is your feelings. Language of the mind is like your thinking patterns and things like that. But essentially... 
is they both influence each other heavily. Let's say if you go and you start talking to somebody or you're you're in a group and you just get triggered at all these feelings and then that's going to r- right away it's going to go up into your head and you're going to have the ruminating thoughts. You know, worst case scenario, I got to get out of here. It's not safe. But then you could also be sitting on the couch thinking about the future. So you just you have a thought pop into your head and then you start thinking about the future. Oh, there's no, you know, things aren't going to get better. And then all of a sudden that's going to influence your feelings. Then you're going to get the feelings down below. So they both heavily influence each other. And so what he's saying is that you can actually sever, you can sever that influence. So when you have a thought, you can let the thought go. When you have a feeling, you can, essentially what, there's a thing called mindfulness. Hopefully you know a bit of meditation, mindfulness, but you can, you can separate from the thought. But you can also, uh, I, I used to call it emotefulness. You can, when the feeling comes, you can separate from the feeling as well, right? And once you, once you separate from the thought, the feelings don't come. If you could separate from the emotion, the thoughts don't come. So there's that kind of two-way influence, right, that you want to be aware of. So. What they want is they want you to be identified with them. They don't want you to be conscious of them. So th- this is really the, the mind aspect of the pain body and the emotional. The pain body is predominantly Im- an emotion, mm-hmm. but there is a mental aspect that, that the pain body needs to rise up into your mind in order to feed on certain types of thinking, in this case, the old narrative. So you also need enough awareness to know that this, it, this thing does not want to go because there's a momentum behind thought patterns that have been active in your mind for a long time. Mm-hmm. So there's a momentum behind it. So you need to be acutely aware of the process of how it creates further pain. And when you look through it and see that's actually what it does, then you've recognized you cannot be deceived anymore by completely believing in it every time it happens. In other words, you see that you create your own pain ultimately. When you see that, that's the beginning of the end. And then you can reach a stage when you, the, the pain is no longer, the feeling is no longer fueled by thinking. Then you arrive at a stage where you realize I don't need the feeling anymore. In fact, you don't need to let go because then when you do not revive it any continuously, it subsides by itself. So you don't need to actually say, I must let go. It lets go of you. And so essentially what he's saying here is that you create your own pain. Um, you, you create your own kind of anxiety. I teach this as well. You you know, anxiety starts and it stops within you. Um, but you got to be careful here because there's a lot of blame culture out there. There's a lot of content out there that says, you know, you're in your, you're currently where you're at because it's all your fault and things like that. It's not the case, right? It's not about fault. It's, it's about responsibility here to, like he said at the beginning of the video, accept that the feeling's there. Once you know the feeling's there, discovering and exploring where that's coming from. Okay, and then and then he talks about once you do that, that it's going to lose, the anxiety is going to lose momentum. So the more you acknowledge the feeling, the less you're going to spiral up here. And I can give you uh, like an example of this because I used to just not be able to speak in front of people. Public speaking I it was the, well, the biggest terror in my life. My mind would go blank. My voice is shaking heart rate's going through the roof. I could not speak in front of anybody. And so when what I think what he's talking about the pain body, I don't know exactly what he means, but it's those painful emotions is what I'm assuming. When those used to get come up, when I used to get triggered, when they would start going around the room, introducing themselves or talking and my heart rate's going through, that's the pain body that comes up. And so the more energy go, rushes into the head and it's the, the worst case thinking, thinking of how it's going to go, what am I going to say, all things like that. And, you know, I, I had a client where um, he wouldn't even be able to 
have a conversation is just so triggered with these anxiety attacks. And essentially, what what I guess what Eckhart's saying this pain body, my client's pain body. When we took a look at it, it was past past bullying, um, being picked on by you know school, family, all of these different things. Those were the painful emotions, that pain that he had to look at. Okay, so once we are able to take a look at that. The pain body doesn't have so much momentum of going into the head and taking over his mind in the conversation. So essentially, the more you can you can look at, from my experience, the more you can look at that emotional pain, the more it stops the momentum to go rush up into the head, take you out of the present moment. Because as you know, if you're suffering from this, it's all about just being present. And when you can't be present, it's due to something down here. Okay, so let's keep going here rather than you need to let go. It's because you're no longer giving it energy. You're no longer feeding it. So that's the process. <laughs> so you need to let go is a bit like saying you need to forgive. That's another one like that. You need topic, to really right? need to forgive. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> I'll really, f I have you forgiven your parents? Yeah, I think I have. But, <laughs> the forgiveness again is in a similar way happens naturally when you look when first right. of all you realize that no human being can act beyond their level of consciousness at that time right and so what he's saying right you know to simplify this he's just saying you know a person can't operate beyond their level of consciousness and so I'm going to give you an example here. So let's go back to the client. He he was operating on this level because he had the emotional pain from the bullies. And then he had the narrative that people are unsafe up here. The narrative was people are unsafe. The story playing, do not go into conversations. They're going to humiliate you. Just stay out of them. That was the programming that took place. But then the thing is, is he became those beliefs. He became that narrative. Okay. So, but when he, once we took a look at where it was coming from, when we found the kind of roots and the crux of it, and he took it and he looked at it from a distance, he gained distance from his narrative. Now it's not that uh, people are, are unsafe and it, the world's unsafe and people are going to humiliate you. It's, hey, I had, an ex I had these experiences. They affected me in this way. And now I have some distance from that new level of consciousness, new level of awareness. I have these reactions because of ABC, like very specific things that happened to him in the past. So do you see how he raises his consciousness? Do you see how he raises his awareness once he's able to get to the roots of where his current behavior is coming from? And so essentially all the resentment, all the, the bitterness, because the, when he doesn't acknowledge the past, when he doesn't acknowledge that, his current thing, his current moment is, or his current situation is, I can't, I can't be in a conversation without feeling like I'm gonna have a panic attack. That's the current situation. So, the he hangs on to the resentment towards the past, towards past people, and all these things. But once he looks at the past, releases, heals that past, comes back to the present moment. And then he's able to have a conversation just fine. He's able to connect with people, forming these like, deeper relationships and things like that. There's no need to forgive that. There's no need to let go. There's no need to force it. He lets go automatically because he's released from that, that past experience. He's released from that pain. It's no longer guiding his current behavior. He's free right? He's free, essentially. So you don't, that's what he's saying. You don't have to force this whole forgiveness and letting go and all that kind of stuff. From their anger towards his mother and so on and so on. And later I realized he, he, he could not help himself. He did not have the awareness. He was take, got taken over by this anger. And the moment I realized that he, that was, he acted, according to his level of consciousness at the time. And so I'm going to skip a little bit ahead here. And essentially he goes into the story um, about his troubled relationship with his father it was just volatile anger. You know, I experienced the same thing uh, in my family of origin. And so essentially he had a, a lot of resentment, love, hate relationship, 
lots of anger, lots of resentment towards his father. And so let's take a look what he says here. Um, how after he healed, right? Like after he was able to um, raise his awareness, raise his consciousness. I didn't need to forgive anymore because there was nothing to forgive anymore. I had, and that's a beautiful thing. So again, similar to letting go of feelings, when enough awareness comes in, the feeling lets go, lets go of you and all becomes transmuted into something, hmm. an energy field that is good. And so forgiveness again cannot really be practiced in the same way that letting go can't really be practiced. It just happens. And then it all right. So that, that's kind of the, the ending of the video. So and essentially, he, that's what he's saying. It's he, he came to this point where he didn't need to forgive because he raised his consciousness and he took a look at that past experience, how it affected him. He released himself. And once he could, was able to look at it, you know, emotionally detached from it, there was no need to forgive. Same with the client I was talking about. Once he was able to look at the past bullying, see how it affected his life, see how it affected his current behavior and heal, heal the pain that was that continued to follow him from that. Once he healed that pain, it no longer got his behavior. There's no need to forgive. Whereas before, it was all like, you know, he's just trying to, he's just got this behavior. He's triggered, triggered. He doesn't know where it's coming from. Where is it coming from? And then all he knows is he resents all these people from the past. And he, people are safe. Uh, you know, I hate people. They're mean. They're, they're this and they're that, right? So you cannot force that letting go. You cannot force that forgiveness. He could sit there you know, and try to meditate till he's blue in the face, try to let it go, try to forgive. But then it's just going to be a matter of time before those feelings come back, trigger him, trigger him. He behaves in a way he doesn't want to. And then it's back. It's that, that momentum in the head again, that reoccurring cycle. And you can't break the cycle, right? And so let me know in the comments, if you want me to do more of these kind of reaction videos, analysis, feedback, things like that, let me know. Just let me know in the comments. And then if you need more help, join our Facebook group. I'm going to link it below the video. I'm in there. You can ask me questions. If you need more help, you need more support, join that group. There's a, there's a resource for you. And so you can connect with me on Instagram as well. I have a page that's full of value, content, inspiration daily. So it's just going to be a ton of value for you to join and keep that momentum going and get that support you need towards being anxiety free. It's going to make your journey a whole lot faster and a whole lot painless. Okay. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. All right. Peace out.